We are currently experiencing a dangerous outbreak of medical scandal awareness. Long may it continue on its unstoppable course. There are now almost 200,000 patients on the NHS waiting list for an autism spectrum disorder assessment in the UK, the highest recorded figure to date. And in many cases, you will be waiting years for the initial consultation. Just a few decades ago, the number of persons with an ASD was one in 10,000. So rare it was hardly ever taught about in medical school. Since then, that figure has shot up to one in 36 in the progressive, inclusive, wide awoke West. In Northern Ireland, the current rate is one in 20, with the urban population having a statistically significant higher prevalence than the rural population. In Scotland, autism organisations proudly proclaim inclusion of the self-diagnosed, neuroqueer, autigender and non-binary identities, while those with the greatest support needs get drowned out by the cluster B screams. The more palatable, explainable autism light attracts worthier attention and diversity funding thanks to that magic rainbow foreboding colours that signify no longer can there be any female-only autism spaces, our recurring theme. To this day, experts have little clue as to what causes autism and absolute certainty what does not. Industry shills would have you believe that the autism epidemic crisis is down to better diagnosis and that, like trans, was always there throughout our evolutionary history. The seizures, the allergies, obesity, insomnia, anxiety, depression, self-harm and severe reactions to our ancestral foodstuffs, etc. are all just part of the condition. Regardless, the diagnostic criteria has not changed. Severely disabling or profound autism comprises more than a quarter of the spectrum and is more likely to be observed in females, in ethnic minorities and in families with a low socio-economic status. At the present rate, profound autism would have been impossible to miss or cope with in the past without lifetime 24-7 care. So what's really going on and why are we not allowed to ask? It is predicted that by 2032 we will be diagnosing one in two children with an ESD. That would mean that 50% of the world's population was always autistic. At what point do the neurotypical become the minority? It seems like this ideology will end up erasing itself along with the most vulnerable in society. An ideology founded on presumptions, assumptions, myths and lies. And of course, warning of monsters and dangerous misinformation. The good thing about monsters, though, is you never have to find out what actually happened to those kids you care about. Because a monster thought or said or wrote or questioned or investigated something bad. So monsters must be cancelled, disregarded, no debate, no dissent. Be grateful that someone else has done the thinking for you. But we're the canaries in the coal mine and you need to hear this well. Big Pharma does not love you. And when that penny finally drops and you think you're angry now, we'll still be here waiting for you to catch up on your long and painfully unmedicated withdrawal. You may hate us, but you will become us. Forgive yourself.